They're the world's greatest cities, famous for their culture and beauty. But there's something else waiting in the shadows. The scammers, the hustlers, the thieves. And they're all looking for tourists to con. State against the wall. Russian roulette. Are you joking me? I'm Connor Woodman, and in Scam City, I set myself up as bait. This is like being kidnapped. A willing victim to be fleeced. I'll catch the scammers in the act. Do you know where my wallet is? I don't know. And reveal the tricks of the trade. Sorry, I'm not talking about that. Because why? It's too dangerous? And I'll expose them face to face. We are filming you scamming me. Scam City. I get scammed, so you don't have to. Police, police. What? What have I done to you? Stay against the wall. I'm in Amsterdam, and things have taken an unexpected turn. Stay against the wall. I will tell you after. Stay against the wall. What are you doing to me? What have I done? years ago, Amsterdam was the richest city in the world. Money poured in from world trade, leaving a legacy of neatly ordered townhouses stretched along picturesque canals and a vibrant red light district. Nowadays, more than five million tourists flood into the city each year, many of them drawn to the red light area like moths to a flame and waiting for them are the scammers. Well, this is a city I used to know pretty well because I used to come here a lot when I was younger. And I can honestly say, in all my travels, it's one of the darkest places I've visited. So it's nice to be back. Most major cities have their pickpockets. I've heard in Amsterdam, it's been elevated to a fine art form. And I want to catch one in the act. I'm in Dam Square, one of the city's famous tourist hotspots. A perfect hunting ground for pickpockets. I've put my fake wallet in my back pocket, ready for action. Three, two, one, up! Except for the street performer, it seems like no one else is working the crowds. Dam Square didn't deliver. Time to check out another tourist magnet, Blumenmarkt, the flower market. I take tram five, a popular tourist route. And success. My wallet's just been lifted. The crew tip me off that it's the woman behind me. So where are we going? Sorry? Where are we going? I don't know. Where are you going? Well, I need my money, so I'm, going, money? I'm going wherever you're going. Which money? <laughs> <laughs> Which money? Huh? Which money? My money. Where's your money? In my wallet. Where's your wallet? Do you know where my wallet is? I don't know. I know where my wallet is. We could go on like this forever. We might as well do it somewhere comfortable. How about we go for coffee? I'm, I'm buying. You're buying. You say, you say you're buying. You say you're buying. You say you're buying. You say you're buying. Well, I haven't, I haven't exactly lost it, because I kind of still know where it is. Yeah. I'm Connor, by the way. Hi. 
Agatha. Agatha. Hi, Agatha. Hi. Eva. Eva. I know Agatha has my wallet, but she's playing hard to get. Well, what is your profession? I do administration and I work with the homeless. Okay. That's interesting. How long have you been doing that? For a long time. I used to be homeless. So I help those people to uh, the benefit of my misery. All oh, right. How long were you homeless for? I was seven years homeless. Seven years? How did you make a little extra money then? Um, do some, some, some jobs. Somebody asked me to do some things for them, and I do. I mean, so, uh, I'm good at writing letters. Yeah, good with your hands. I can't type. I don't know what what do you, what you mean. You start to be a little dirty, a sleazy too, or what? That wasn't what I was getting at. I'm good at talking. You have to get out here. I've got to get out too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So anyway, about my wallet. Are we going to give me my wallet back? We don't have your wallet. Oh come on. Okay. How about you keep the wallet? But we can just go for a coffee and finish our chat. I don't have the wallet, but okay. uh, if you want to buy a coffee, you can buy a coffee. Okay, that's cool. Let's go for a coffee then. Okay. You can keep my wallet in exchange for information about the city's red light district. You know what it is? This was always an area for prostitutes for getting scanned for everything. It started to become more aggressive. So now for 10 euros, you have to be careful you don't get a knife on your throat. I mean, in the last couple of years, a lot of girls are killed who work on the street. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's getting worse and worse. And, and, and you have to remember, there always will be people who are using drugs and are addicted. And I mean, if they don't have any, any possibility, they start, like, like a cat in the dark, start to do crazy things. You do what you have to do to survive as a woman. I mean, if you don't want to go into prostitution, you have to find other ways. Like pickpocketing? We know some. We have to go to Central Station. Yeah. Anyway, we have to go. So it was nice meeting you. It was nice meeting you. Have a nice day. Bye. And there they go with my wallet. So it seems there can be a sinister edge to this city's anything goes culture. I'm on my way to meet a former hustler who worked these streets for 17 years. If there is a dark side here, he'll know all about it. Watch where you're going, man. What? what you, man, you, I'm sorry you dropped your bottle, mate. Come, 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 motherfucker. Oh, you banged into me. I'm sorry that happened. Give me my money for my drunk. I'm sorry that happened. Give me right? my money. What money? What money? What money? Give me money for the drunk. This is clearly a con. I feel like I'm getting stung here. What was it? Give me my money. It's a crude but clever trick. Give me my money. Probably wasn't even real whiskey. Money. Is it full bottle? Yeah, full bottle. Give me my money. How much money do you want? 30 euro. Got some change? I only have a 50. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Take the 50. Go, go. I pay over the odds, knowing it's a rip off. But I'm in a hurry. I'm late for my meeting with the one time street hustler. Good evening. No. Hey, hi, Connor. Connor. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good, man. Nice to meet you. Um, I believe you, uh, you know the streets of Amsterdam pretty well. Uh, I do, yes. I know them very well because uh, there was a time I was addicted to uh, cocaine and heroin. And at that time, I spent 17 years here in this area to hustling, making money, and to uh, use the drugs. Okay. What kind of hustles did you do? I was especially focused on uh, foreigners, 
I knew they were coming fresh tourists to the city, okay. so I knew I can make uh, good money to provide my needs for drugs. So every weekend you'd get fresh blood? Yeah, every in. weekend, especially on the holidays and in the weekends. Okay. They are vulnerable because they don't know uh, what's going on all in the city, and especially when they are under influence, they can be easy target. What sort of cheats and hustles did you do on tourists? I was focused on selling them uh, nep dope, we call it here, you know, fake drugs. But how does the fake dope work? It's uh, something what the dentists use. When you put it on your tongue, it makes uh, your mouth immediately numb. And a lot of people think it is real cocaine, but it is uh, rubbish. Fake drugs and buyers with no idea what they're taking. That could be interesting. But if I want to go out and get myself in a bit of trouble, where's the good areas for me to go? If you want trouble, you should go outside the area where the cameras are hanging and you pretend you are a little bit drunk and looking everywhere so they know, oh, this guy doesn't know where, uh, he's not from here, he's an outsider. For sure, they will approach you in uh, one way or the other to get money out of you. This city has a fairy tale prettiness to it. But we all know in fairy tales, you're never far from something hiding in the shadows. Last night I was told that scammers in Amsterdam are as prevalent as ever, targeting tourist party-goers in the city's red light district. Tonight I'm going to play the vulnerable tourist with the hope of finding some trouble. But for now, the crew and I head towards Amsterdam's famous floating flower market the Blumenmarkt. Some countries are famous for their food, others wine, Holland, tulips. Over three billion are grown each year. What better souvenir to take home? So in here, 55 tulips. 7 euros 50. He's got 55 there and got 100 here. 155 tulips. Be all right. <laughs> Beautiful Amsterdam tulips. 15 euros. <laughs> that sounds like a good deal. Almost too good to be true. Cheers. That's enough souvenir shopping. I think it's safe to say my garden next year will look blooming marvelous. Agatha, the woman who stole my wallet yesterday, told me Central Station is a pickpocket's playground. So that's where I'm heading next. Two hundred and fifty thousand people pass through here every day. It's the gateway to Amsterdam. I'm trying a different strategy. I've planted a note in my new wallet with my phone number and the offer of a reward. If someone steals it, hopefully this will bait them to call. Excuse me, you don't know where the, uh, the Rembrandt plane is? The Rembrandt? Rembrandt plane. Uh, no, sorry. Police are crawling all over this station. Surely pickpockets wouldn't take the chance. Sorry, you don't know where the Rembrandt plane is, do you? Rembrandt Square. Yes, it's, uh, if you want, that way, all the way, go all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. OK. You see okay. the signs? Rembrandt Square. Thank you very much. I'm starting to douse Agatha's tip-off. Are, are you looking for a 
hotel. Looking for uh, something or uh, Rembrandt's plane. Rembrandt Square. Um, just a moment. Um, because well, I need my glasses. I don't have a glasses at the moment. Mm. But um, go direct uh, by Hi. the dumb street. Are you lost? It's your girlfriend. I'm asking for uh, Rembrandt Square, but I don't have my glasses. So I'm trying yeah. because Central because Station. Because this one is, just, is uh, yeah. like. Uh, yeah. You just have to follow from. Okay. Um, you can also take one of those trams. Tram 9 is going to the, to okay. the Hem Hembrand Square. That's great, thank you. Yeah. It's gone. What? It's, the wallet's no. gone. It's gone. The wallet's gone. The wallet's gone. It's taken my wallet. It's taken the wallet. That was good. I didn't feel a thing. But where's he gone? He's vanished. He even managed to shake the crew. She approached and he came round the back of me and took the wallet. And then he just, he was gone. Ah. Well, we filmed it happening, but we lost the pickpocket. So, he did half of it right. Now, I guess we just have to hope he calls the number on the piece of paper. I'm back at the hotel where I left my tulips. And I think I've unearthed another scam. There was something about this bag of tulips that I bought that felt light to me, so I counted, and there's only 70 in here when there should be 100. I did the same again with this bag. It should be 55, there's only 39, which is 25 to 30% less than there should be. So I'm going to go back and investigate further. Exported tulips are worth around 300 million euros to the Dutch economy every year. This is big business. Hey, hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. Good, and you? Good, Hi. Connor. Hi, tell me. I bought a few bags of tulips from here. The 100 bags yes. have got 70, 75 in. Oh. The 55 bags have got 39 in. You really you buy, don't know? No, no, I don't know. How many you buy? One, <laughs> one of these? I can't believe this is a surprise to you. No, because, because you see, I buy the, the thing from the company. Yeah. And I put in the selling. And you never but, count but, your own box? I, I don't count the box. Never? You what? just, you see, you don't have time to count every bag. I but don't do you, have but you never counted one bag? No, sir. You I don't, don't have time I to don't, count one bag? I don't do it. Count that bag. I don't want to say, but I don't do it. But I, I have too much things to do. He's in no hurry to count them to see if what I'm saying is even true. And he doesn't seem surprised by my accusations. Sir. I know you know. You know I know you know. This is your word what you think. <laughs> Otherwise, why didn't you count them now? Just to check. I okay. could be, it's a lot of your stock. Look, that's exactly. one, two, exactly. three, exactly. four shelves, exactly. all of those ones over there. You never did one check ever. No. Why? Because you're being ripped off 30%. If what you say is true, you're buying 70 when you, you're, exactly, when you think you're buying exactly, 100. Exactly. I have to call the company. What happened with this thing? And will you change your sign to 39 bulbs? Exactly. For 750. Okay. You really didn't know? No, I don't know, sir. <laughs> I think you must know. Yeah. I can't believe you don't know. What do you name? Connor. Connor. And your name? Philip. Philip. Bond. <laughs> There's a man with nothing to hide. <laughs> no. Nothing to hide. No. Not even his name. No. <laughs> well, he didn't exactly admit there's a scam going on there, but it was quite revealing that he didn't feel the need to check how many bulbs were in the bag and he's in no rush to call his supplier. And until he does, every tourist buying bulbs there is going to do exactly what I did and get ripped off. I've been pickpocketed twice since I arrived here. Have I just been unlucky or is street crime here more organised? I'm going to meet an ex-undercover cop who might be able to shed some light on the city's criminals. 
you think the problems got worse or do you think it's improved a bit? Well, uh, absolutely it got worse. There were always uh, pickpockets, but uh, that was a much smaller group. What we see now is uh, that those groups are from other countries, specific from Eastern Europe. And are they operating as gangs? They operate as a kind of gang uh, very often. Yeah, they know each other. They also have uh, contact with those uh, people on the, the taxi bikes. And these are also Romanians. They receive very often the goods. And so there is a kind of contact. If we talk about pickpockets, at, uh, at the tourist who is in the tram, for example, and going to, uh, to a certain place. Or uh, people uh, who are in a restaurant with an iPhone on the table. And these are real first victims. So my hunch was right. I wasn't just unlucky. There are gangs operating in the red light district. The gangs in the red light district do get their money from uh, big business, uh, soft drugs and also hard drugs. And that's also related very often to high uh, Moroccan dealers. I mean, now that they're operating as gangs, do they kind of behave in a different way? Has it become more aggressive? Nowadays, we do have more violence. A lot of people nowadays get killed. Moroccan guys get, get killed because of drug deals. We had in one day two guys uh, killed in Amsterdam West. Was shot by the Kalashnikov. Wow, heavy stuff. That is heavy stuff. As a tourist, you're not, you're not that far removed from this. Absolutely, absolutely. Agatha talked about knives. Case is talking about AK-47s. This is hardcore stuff. Either way, there seems to be some organisation at work, which means tourists could be one step away from a criminal network. Amsterdam's red light district is one of the few places in the world where the sale of sex and soft drugs is openly tolerated. It's not hard to see why tourists get distracted. Mo, my ex-hustler friend I met earlier, used to sell fake drugs here. I wonder if the dealers are still playing that game. It's illegal to deal drugs on the street here, but where there's demand, there's supply. And real or fake, tourists are willing to take the risk. The place is packed, and it doesn't take long before I'm approached. How much one? Five gram, ten gram. One is for seventy, two for hundred. But I don't want drugs. I want information. Let me see. I don't trust this man. He's with me. He's with me. He's yeah, like, he's my mate. Yeah. But I know the police. Who's? Yeah. Huh? No police, no this shit. Eh? I'm not the, the, okay, the English go. police in Amsterdam. Where are you going? This isn't going to be easy. They don't want to talk. They just want to make money. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Yeah? It takes some persuasion, but eventually I get one of the dealers to open up. You work by phone? Yeah. OK. So you have regular customers? Yeah. And what do they buy mostly? Coke? Coke, sometimes <laughs> ecstasy, sometimes heroin, sometimes crack. You have it all? I can get, can get all. All right, OK. He's a mobile pharmacist but you don't need a prescription. So you think, if I, if I went up to just some random guy who offers me coke, if I pretend to be drunk, you think he'll give me a fake one? If I'm straight, he'll give me a real one? They're always going to try you to give you first a fake one. A guy who is drunk, he don't know the difference what is fake or... <laughs> but how much money are these guys making? Some guys make on even to 1,500 one night with it. 1,500 one yeah, night? 1,500, 2,000. That's a lot of cash. Drugs and money can be a dangerous mix. Do you carry a weapon? For what? Protection? Yeah. 
and do you have someone looking out for you? Of course you have guys who know each other, you know, look, I know guys here, if I get in a fight, I know if they see me, they're going to come and jump. Well, they'll protect you. They don't like protecting me, they know me, look. Yeah, OK. A group of guys looking out for each other. That sounds like a gang to me. And I'm now on a deadline. You're on a deadline? Yeah. you got to sell some stuff to make some money? Yeah, I have to pay stuff for Okay. 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 I've taken up too much of your time already. Thank you. <laughs> when the bars close, trade hits its peak. I'm going to the main strip to see if I can find other dealers. I'm getting frisked for drugs, but he's not going to find anything. I was only talking to the drug dealer. What are you doing to me? What, are you, what have I done? What have I, I haven't done anything wrong. There's something not quite right about this. Stay there. Stay there. I haven't done anything wrong. Look the other side. Stay there. He explain to me what I've done. Explain to me what I've done. Now it's starting to get heavy. Stay there. Have I really just been hit in the face by the police? What have I done to you? Stay against the wall. I tell you, stand against the wall. I will tell you after. Stay against the wall. Tell me what I've done. Against the wall. Tell me what I've done. Now where are you going? He's taking my wallet. That's a new one. A fake cop. Robbery with a clever twist. Anyone who had just bought drugs from that dealer would be a soft target. He's gone. He's gone. I don't know where he's gone. He's disappeared. Wallet's gone. I said he was the he was a policeman. He showed me some ideas. Quite physical with me. And when I went after him, he just disappeared into that alley. And now I've no idea where he's gone. And he's nicked my wallet. Short counted tulips, fake drugs, a fake cop, and three lost wallets. Amsterdam is proving to be an interesting place. Last night I met some of the wolves who add bite to this fairy tale city. There's beauty everywhere you look, but some of the characters are straight from the Brothers Grimm. But I'm on a roll. I've just received a call from the guy who says he stole my wallet at Central Station. We arrange to meet on the edge of the red light district. late, very late. My pickpocket was supposed to be here half an hour ago and now he's turned his phone off. So it doesn't look like he's gonna turn up. I'm not completely surprised. Meeting me must feel like a risky move. Maybe he got cold feet.
I'm going back into the heart of the city. Let's see how organised these dealers really are. This time, I'm taking my producer as my wingman. We order a couple of beers, blend in with the crowds and wait for the dealers to approach us. But the night takes an unexpected turn. I just tried to take some money out of an ATM machine, but something went wrong. I put my card in, but no cash came out, even though I could hear the machine whirling round. So we're staking out the bank, waiting to see if anything happens. A couple of minutes later, two guys approach the same ATM. They did not put a card in that machine. They did not put a card in that machine. They were there for about two seconds. What do you reckon? They didn't know. Come on, let's go after them. Let's go after them. Quick, 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 quick. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you all right? How you doing? You all right? You, you, went, you, went, you went straight after me and you... Nice big, nice big, nice big, nice big, nice big. No, 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 no. Tell me, what'd you do? How does that work? No, come back, come back, show me it. I, I put my card in, no right. money came out, the thing was sealed over the top. Right. And then you guys went over, and then you you didn't seem to put a card in, you walked away with a little bit of money. I'm just wondering whether that was my money. Can I see your card? Come back and show me. He's with me, yeah, he's with me. Come back, show me, please, show me how you do this. On the basis that we won't reveal their identity, they agree to tell me about the bank job they've just pulled off. I put my card in the ATM, no money comes out. Oh, you yes. was doing yeah. the blockation. See, this, was, this was the barrier. It's that simple, you just glue that over the front of the ATM and the money sticks to it. And then you just, what, you just go and pull it off? Easy money. And where did you learn this? I jump, but I should know the last boy. From a friend or from a family or who? When did you first start doing this? Ah, one, one. They may not be the Jesse James gang, but it must be a lucrative scam to be worth the risk. If you're doing this, I mean, even every night, and you're making, I don't know, three, four, five hundred euros a night, it's a lot of money. I can see this is this could be a really good scam for making a lot of cash. No, 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 no. No, I come. So fast, money is there. Because the idea, in primus, in primus, run, no scot ban, Hollanders. But what about in the tourist areas? Tourist aid, we must just scot dodge the euro. I'm supposed to buy nothing. Because you scot for the room join, she will bury. Twenty euros. Most tourists I know take out a lot more than that. Do you worry about the banks? No, me freak up because I'm coming for me. Fuck what? Yeah. Good luck, man. See ya. I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them, and I definitely don't believe that they only do it every now and again and they get 20 or 40 euros from it. That is one of the simplest scams I've ever seen and potentially one of the most lucrative. It seems like there's a new scam on every corner around here. but it's still the fake drugs that intrigue me the most.
Maybe the locals can help. Oh, you make pain for me. Oh, wow. OK. But the girls are only interested in one thing, business. And it's not the business I'm looking for. What's up, guys? Yo, what can I help? Okay? What do you need? I got some good gold. If you want some ecstasy, I got some ecstasy. If you want this, I got some that. I can fix you everything. Look at my face. I don't play. You know? Okay. Now, this guy's business is the business I'm interested in. And better still, he's happy to talk. If you want, we take a walk, I show you some things around, then you can understand the life that's happening here. Yeah, man, that's what... Let's, let's take a walk. Let's take, no a walk. let's take a walk. No problem. Let's take a walk. You know what the thing is? Everybody who comes here is looking for money. You can make more money from the fake stuff because it's easy money. Yeah. You give the people nothing and you get the money. You get the money. You can put a lot of things inside and cut the stuff. You know? Yeah. And then when you go taste the stuff, it's just like a uh, coke. It's just like coke, but it's hospital coke. It's hospital coke? Hospital coke. What's hospital coke? It no. makes your tongue go none. But it's not really Your nose go none, but it don't give you not one of the flesh. At last, the real deal. Or better, the fake deal. How much is the hospital coke? The hospital coke I sell for 30 gram, 30 euro one gram. And how much do you buy that for? Two euro one gram. Normal, my friend. OK. That's normal. And what other fake drugs do you have? Ecstasy, ecstasy heroin? Ecstasy, heroin. You have fake heroin, fake ecstasy. You have fake cocaine, fake grass. Grass that is, uh, you smoke it, don't do nothing. OK. Fake drugs, but not at fake prices and it's a seller's market. You sell all of those to tourists? It's on the street, you know? Yeah. If the tourists want it, you give it. Because why? You need the money. Yeah. I don't need nothing else. Yeah. I need only the money. I don't need friends or nothing. I need money. If they're really drunk, do they even notice? They don't taste nothing. That's the whole thing. Let's take a walk, okay. because my tongue is dry. You have to give me a drink now. OK, let's go for a drink. Let me talk too much. Let's go for a drink. Let's go, man. What I'm going to tell you, if you walk here in Amsterdam, you know, like a tourist, you're a target for everybody. Even the oldest woman who walk like this, see you like a target. Why? You because are you're new in town, <laughs> smell it. Right. You're the tourist, I'm the hustler. Yeah. You know, I look for money, you look for fun. You get the fun, I get the money. A simple trade between willing partners. He gets the money, but I'm not sure how much fun it is for the victim. Amsterdam, a 24-hour party town where anything goes, especially your money. As I head back to the hotel, I get an unexpected surprise when I spot a familiar face, the fake cop who stole my wallet. Come on, let's go over. Is you? Thought I recognised you. What? Who are you? Mr. Police Officer from the alley. Yeah, what the fuck you want, Dan? Huh? What the <laughs> fuck you want? And what's wrong with you? Nothing wrong with what's me. What's the problem? No problem. What are you looking for? After a few polite denials, 
He's another one happy to open up. That's the ID that you were carrying with you the other night, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So? Can I see that again? I didn't get a close look at it the other night because it was yeah. dark. See? It's not a police ID, though, is it? I'm not for the police, man. You're not a policeman? No. And your wallet is uh, also gone, so... Hey, don't worry, I don't want the wallet. It's fine. How long have you been doing that? A long time, maybe like uh, 15 years ago. And how often can you pull off the fake policeman scan? Three, four times a week. And what's yep. the most you got in one hit? In one hit? Uh, nearly 10,000. One thing's for sure, everyone is making money out of tourists here and not from selling clogs. What other kind of things are you involved in? Robberies, gambling, also drugs, fake drugs. As long as tourists, there's money. It's my work, you know. You got to make money, you got to survive. You ever been caught? I've been in jail, France, six years. Six years? Yeah, for smuggling hash, 175 kilos from Morocco to Holland. That was my work before. Now I'm a little bit retired. So robbing people like me is just his pension plan. So within that red light district, do you, yeah. all you guys, you all know each other? You all kind of look out yeah, for each other? Yeah, we all know each other, yeah. Uh, it's like a game. You can call it that, yeah. One day you help me, another day I help you. Do you ever get in fights with people? Yeah, it happens sometimes, but you lose. It's my fucking city. It's my area. Huh? You cannot come in my house and think you can hit me. And me, I can stand up for myself. But yeah. there are always people behind me. If something happens, they jump in. You won't see where they come from. Tell your friends to watch out for Tony. <laughs> and his yeah. friend. <laughs> and my friend here, Ahmed. Tell him to watch out. Fine, it's worth yeah. it. See ya. Nice Take care. Watch yourself. <laughs> right, see you, man. Right? Amsterdam's divided right down the middle, with tourists on one side and on the other, guys like Tony and Ahmed and the rest of his gang just waiting to rip them off. They may look like rogue operators who act independently, but they're actually part of a loose network. It's like I'm being passed from thief to thief, and everyone takes a bite out of me. But I still don't know how organized they are. And then, I get a phone call. Bye. Well, I finally managed to track down the guy that pickpocketed me outside of Central Station, and I've got what I hope is his address. I've got a lot of questions I want to ask him about pickpocketing here in Amsterdam and how it fits in with everything else that's going on here. Hey. He's invited me over for a cup of tea. Come on, come in. Beautiful. Hey, thank you. When did you start pickpocketing? Oh, well, did you start in Sao Paulo to learn from people who live on the street? What kind of things do you do to distract the tourists when you're pickpocketing them? I see if he are looking for something, if he's looking them like you, Example. With the map? Yes, with the map. And I ask him if he is lost or if he likes that I show the direction or if he needs some kind of accommodation. How do you know which people have got money on them? I just look at where he is, how he pay his bill, and which bag he choose to put the wallet. Right. Mm. How many languages do you speak? Portuguese, English, French, Germany. Holland, uh, a little bit of Arabs and Japanese. So you can distract? Uh, yeah. You can pickpocket people from all of those countries? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if he, he don't like to talk in English, I talk in his language. I ask him, where are you from? Then he's going to say where he's from, and I start to talk in his language because this way 
he's going to be more comfortable to hear somebody who's talking the same language. This guy's a seasoned pro. Tourists don't stand a chance. So what's, what's the most money you made pickpocketing someone in Amsterdam? Oh, in the weekends, uh, if I go out, I can come home every evening with 500,000 euros. Working just two nights a week, Domingo has the potential to earn 50,000 euros a year. That's a lot of money and a lot of ruined holidays. Have you ever seen a tourist be stabbed? Uh, with mess with knife? Yes, of course, many times. In there, in the red light street, because of one bottle of cocaine, the guy killed uh, uh, one Englishman. It was terrible. You killed him? He killed him, yeah. And is there a boss of the, of the uh, light district? He's a big chef, chief. And who, who are the chiefs? I, mean, I cannot tell you, I cannot show you, because they are private, I cannot do this. They give us something if we don't have nothing there. We didn't have any joke. They say to us, oh, come over, take 100 or we'll take 50 euro. Yeah, go enjoy yourself till tomorrow. During the times, come again. We are professional to do something bigger to him, you know. Domingo makes this place sound like a benevolent society for local scammers. A loose confederacy of thieves and hustlers preying on wide-eyed visitors. But if you keep your wits about you in Amsterdam, you might just avoid Domingo and his friends. Amsterdam is beautiful. It has a deserved reputation as a liberal and tolerant city. Tourists flood in looking for the kind of thrills they can't get back home. It may feel like a fairy tale city, but remember, some of its risks are very real.